Happy New Year, everyone. I'm sure we are all glad to say goodbye to, I know I am, possibly the worst year ever. So now we can start all over and say hello to the new year. Yes, that's right. In just two weeks from now, they're going to hold the first championship game between the NFL and the AFL. They're calling it the first Super Bowl. Kansas City Chiefs versus the Green Bay Packers should be a good game. I think I'll tune in and watch that on my new color television. It's the jet set age, after all. It's the summer of love. It's Lucy in the sky with diamonds. It's the year of the miniskirt. There's a lot going on this year. It looks to be another busy year in the auto industry as well, as a host of new cars are introduced at Geneva and Earl's Court, and some of the industry leaders are showing off the latest new models. What goes along with the new architecture of the times, the new modern looks, straighter lines, low profiles, horizontality, a maximization of space and function. To keep up with the goings-on in the industry, I mail-ordered this catalog, the Annual Automobile Review. It has a listing of all the active makes from around the globe and their offerings. There's all kinds of amazing advertisements. There is actually, I can't believe it, an advertisement for the Trabant, the Trabant 601. And then on this page, the Matra with a Ford engine. And then here we have an advertisement for the Skoda 1000 MB. Uh, this is Citron's advertising. I'm not going to show every one of these Citron of Switzerland. In this year, their designers thought it would be interesting to have these a huge page of just this maybe color swirl and a tiny picture in the bottom corner of a preview of the car which i honestly don't think is actually very good advertising but they really stuck with it in this publication there's a bunch of ads it's a different color of each of these color swirls with just a little bit of the car shown at the bottom and so we have the announcement 1967 with a nice Lancia Fulvia advertisement by Zagato on the left and some of the cars coming out this year. The Fiat Dino Sports, which looks wonderful. The nice and boring, but somewhat oddly American looking Opel Commodore. New cars announced for 1967. There's that Matra again. And the Lancia Fulvia Italian design. The Lotus Europa, that's also shown, I think, in my last video. Fiat 124 Sport Coupe, Triumph Spitfire, Mercedes 250 SL, if you can find one of these today, that's actually quite a valuable. One of my favorites, actually, the Wolseley. Wolseley 1885, which is a land crab with a really cute Wolseley grill and possibly a little bit more power, but more of a luxury interior, but your standard badge engineering. We're still British Motors and we're not yet Leyland. That's in, in the future. General Motors International, GM's Vauxhall division, the new Camaro, how can we forget? Cadillac Eldorado, and then the Opal Record, which is fortunately in the background. Nobody wants to look at that. Ford's International for 1967 is actually some really famous cars. The Cortina, is this the Mark II Cortina? Mercury Cougar, that is a really just a badge engineered Mustang. There's somebody who lives very close by me that has one of these in olive green in like stock condition. He drives it around. I see it every once in a while. It's a really cool car. And then the kind of boring looking uh, Ford Germany Taunus. This is certainly not boring, is Ford's sort of luxury car, the four-door Thunderbird. But I don't know how many of those were actually made because I've never seen these except in occasionally some books. And this year, some really cool sports car designs. Ferrari Dino, that's also been shown in, I think, one of the past books I did, the Encyclopedia of Automobiles, maybe. And then a custom design version by Pin and Farina. Yes, Pininfarina's design right here, that actually is even better. And then a car that was introduced brand new in 1967 that we've had to live with ever since, the Toyota 1100 Corolla. Yay. 
So they've been doing dullness for over 50 years. Also new this year, brand new, the new Wartburg 1100. They're calling it 1100, but actually it's a 1000. It's a 992cc three-cylinder, but it's a whole new body for the Wartburg. And this would, in uh, East Germany, be called the 353 eventually, but it even says in this caption how it is still technologically based on the old DKW, they call it the 3 equals 6, but it's like the old DKW F9 design. Speaking of design, this car is a new design, designed by Reliant, but made for the Turks. It's the Anadol in Turkey. That's kind of interesting. I have no idea what this is. It says it's a Ferguson R5 prototype. It looks like the front end has been designed possibly by like Bertoni or someone in Italy. And the rear section of the car looks like a French estate car, like a Citroen or something. Chrysler is also proud to this year begin advertising for their international division uh, to compete with Ford and GM. Chrysler International is finally getting itself off the ground. They, they're they just taking over routes in the UK, and they're going to absorb that into Chrysler Europe. And this also gives them a market to possibly advertise some of their American-made cars for the European market, in this case, the uh, Barracuda. And starting off with a Barth, as always in the A's. And it looks like everybody is making clones of the Fiat 500. This one's the 595. I'm going to assume that means it has 595cc and then 695cc version. 695SS, still with the doors opening the backwards way. I saw a ton of 500s still on the road in Italy when I was there a couple of years ago. But I don't know if they were Abarth versions. Alpine... The French Alpine, this is one of the last sort of native French sports cars still in production. The 1967 Alpine Berlinette and the A110. It looks possibly like it has a Renault underlay. And then we have Alvis. Alvis, not Elvis. Alvis in the UK. This will be the last year for Alvis. They're a military vehicle manufacturer for the British Crown but they also were making a luxury car. And once they came under the control of Leyland, Leyland decided to discontinue the Elvis luxury car because it was hardly selling any. So here's the very last version, the Elvis TF, and then some custom bodied by Graber, Sport Coupe Super and Cabriolet. So they were actually three different cars in the market, but I think all three of them are coach built. And actually, the Amphicar is here. So Amphibious Car, there is an Amphibious Car for sale. The Amphicar 770, this is Hans Trippel's design, still being made in 1967. They even show it on the water appropriately. Well, I have something underneath the book here to prop it up so I don't mess up the binding anymore because it is actually quite old. So here's two things. One is, again, the Hunter being advertised as a Sunbeam, but this version of it is really the Singer, that's the Singer front end. So this is really the new Singer Vogue. They're advertising it as the Sunbeam Hunter Vogue. And we'll have a look at Citron. Here's Citron's cars. And if you can't tell the way these are arranged in the catalog, the smallest or lowest price car is always listed first and then working way up to the most expensive. So Citron starts off, Citron F for France, with the du chevaux shown right next to a horse. That's what CV actually means in French, two horses with just one horse. It's still 425 cc, two cylinder, 66 by 62. So that's 425 cc twin cylinder. The top speed, which is, I don't know how to pronounce that, Huxgeschwindigkeit, 95 kilometers per hour. That will be somewhere around 59 maybe. 58 or 59 miles per hour is the top speed of the 2CV. The Ami 6, a 2CV with a nicer body, and a, the 602cc engine that would eventually be used in the 2CV. So a little bit larger engine, but still, I think an air-cooled boxer motor. Citron ID, this is the 
cheapest possible version of the DS. The IDEA, the ID19, the DS21, and the Palaz version is, has some uh, running lights shown in the snow with the pneumatic suspension lowered all the way down, and then the Cabrio version. These are really valuable now. And then we have DAF. There's DAF from the Netherlands with their little daffodil. This is a rear drive, front engine rear drive car that uses a belt-driven, conical and belt-driven CVT transmission. I've seen a few road tests of these cars, and it really is very much like driving a scooter, you know, a twist control scooter where you put your foot down in the gas and the car sort of revs at a kind of a mid-range and just sort of accelerates on its own. It doesn't shift because it's continuously variable on a cone with belt drive, and they're actually external belts on the rear axle. So the Daffodil, this car has been around since maybe 1958 or 59, and the new Michelotti designed DAF 44. The engine is a two-cylinder boxer motor, so that's a horizontally opposed 844cc and top speed 123 kilometers per hour. I don't know how fast that is right off the top of my head. Here's another one of those advertisements I was talking about with Citron. This one shows the 2CV and just this little, okay, that's the style. Thought I would look at some exotic cars. So a British shed car called the Fairthorpe. This is the Fairthorpe EM3. I think these are like a plastic body or fiberglass body shell. And it says here it has a Triumph 1147cc Triumph engine. So does that Amphicar we saw before. And then the Fairthorpe TX, possibly with a Ford engine, I think. Yes, from the Ford Cortina. So they took a Triumph engine in this car and a Ford Cortina engine for this car. And then we have Ferrari, the 275 GTB. These are worth millions now. What's its price back in 1967 with a 3.3 liter V12? How fast do these go? Did Ferrari admit what its performance of its cars is back in 1967? 330 GTC, convertible, 235 kilometers per hour. So that's, um, that's more than 120. That's at least maybe 140. The 365 California Cabrio, and then Fiat. Fiat has a estate car version of the 500 called the Giardiniera, and that's up here, the 500 Giardiniera. I've always thought about getting a model of one of these, but they are kind of small. And this was actually made until even after it lasted, outlasted the 500. I didn't see any in Italy, ironically, even though it was built for longer, but not in as big a number. And I think they license built this elsewhere too. So there's the 600D, still in production in 1967 and will be for some years, the 850. And the Familiar, the 850 Familiar, so this is a grown-up version of the 600 Multipla, maybe. And then the 850 Coupe, the Spider convertible, and the 1100. This will be built in all kinds of different countries, including in India as the premier. And I actually I did study abroad in India about 20 years ago, and this car, this very car, was as the premier pad mini in india was still driving around all over the place i saw a bunch of them as kind of like a new car i think they're made in they were made in bombay or mumbai and because i'm interested i also thought i would take a look at glas which does actually translate to glass a german make of car that a company is being run by hans glas who this very year will be finally taken over by bmw and absorbed, and sadly, the Glas line of cars will disappear. What they were building in 1967, the little Glas Gagomobile is still in production. More than 300,000 of these would be made. It was introduced in the early or the mid 1950s and would still be in production after the demise of the rest of the Glas line of cars until 1969. The catalog is listing only the T and TS400 version. It's possibly because there's a supplement for cars that are considered microcars, 
And in Germany, anything with 250cc or less is a microcar, even though it's just the same size car with a smaller engine. But I believe the TS 300 and 4 and 250, the TS 250 and 300 should still have been in production at this time. The, four, the TS 400 and T 400 have the twin cylinder, two stroke, 395 cc engine, 18 and a half horsepower. The top speed here is shown for the sedan to be 100 kilometers per hour or 62 miles per hour and a little tiny bit faster for the coupe. The Glaz 1004, this is a car that's kind of an oddball. It looks a little bit improved here, but some of the early versions of this, it really looks like you can't tell the front from the back. They made a convertible version. They made a hatchback, one of the very first ever hatchbacks built by Glaz in 1967, the 1304 CL. The Gloss 1304 TS, this will be a slightly larger engine for the 1004, and attempting to become a luxury car maker with the Gloss 1700. The styling by this car, I think, is by Pininfarina as well, but because Isaria did not have a, a large factory, Gloss's factory in Dingolfing was too small to make these in huge numbers, so they were made in very small numbers but they then spent a lot of money making a really pretty coupe version that looks just as nice as those Ferraris that we saw, including a Cabriolet and possibly the greatest Glaz car of all, the 2600 V8 that is being introduced this year. Uh, the BMW people will put a more powerful 3000 engine, 3000 cc V8 in this car and advertise it as a BMW Glaz V8, but they'll only make about 700 of them. Hillman, here's Hillman for 1967 with the Imp Deluxe. Pretty much the same as when it was introduced in 63, being built in Linwood in Paisley in Scotland. The factory was set up because of a government initiative that encouraged Roots Motors to start up a new factory and in return for that, the government agreed to help subsidize it. Unfortunately, it was a huge disaster, and the factory was plagued by all kinds of labor action, meaning like strikes constantly. The quality of the car was not up to standard of what Roots' products usually were, and in part caused by the aluminum, the all-aluminum engine, that Roots had no experience making something like this. And this car was quite a complex rear engine design as opposed to the very simple front engine front wheel drive Mini, which was cheaper, faster, more economical. So the Imp ended up being a failure. And as a result, the Chrysler Corporation came and stepped in and offered to help Roots out and ended up taking them over this year. So now Hillman will be part of the new Chrysler United Kingdom. The advertisement for Smiths for you Brits out there. Are they still around? I wanted to find out what they were saying about the Hillman Minx, and here it is. You can see at the bottom, the new Minx is really just a slightly cheaper version of the new Hunter body. This is the Aero body style. The engine is the smaller engine, so it's the 1496, the 1 1.5 liter engine, makes it a Minx. With the 1750cc engine, this will be the Hunter 1725cc. I misspoke. And the Hillman Hunter, which is really just the same exact car. Hino is still around. This will be the last year for Hino in cars. They're a well known lorry maker. But the Hino car that looks like, it, very much like it's styled, inspired by the Corvair, is the Contessa. Contessa 1300, these are rear-engined, and the Coupe, which I like very much, actually. And a sports car version that looks kind of like a Fiat. Mitsubishi. Mitsubishi makes the Mini car. This is the K car. And it should still be 360cc with a little twin-cylinder two-stroke engine in 1967 and a Mini car station wagon. These cars are really tiny. It would have been neat if they could have shown them posing with a model who would have just towered over it, sort of like um, my figures tower over their cars. 
of course, I had to show Panard. Panard has been taken over by Citron and are just a division now of the larger Citron, but they are a manufacturer of military vehicles, APVs, and AMVs, and Citron decides to only keep it as a maker of AMVs and discontinue the Panard line of cars, which is down to the 24 in short wheelbase and long wheelbase versions only. The Dyna engine is still the old little two-cylinder, horizontally opposed, 848cc, 50 horsepower. That gives the car a top speed, though, that's really quite impressive. Nearly 90 miles per hour, though the acceleration was kind of slow and gradual because the transmission really wasn't up to the task. But here is the last of the Panards, the 24B not shown, the 24BT, the long wheelbase version here with the family, and the little 24CT, the short wheelbase coupe version, and production will end in July. Singer, Singer's still here. The Singer Chamois is their version, or the Singer badged version, of the Hillman Imp down here. And the Chamois Sport is just maybe slightly higher horsepower version, 51 horsepower. And then Singer, we finally get to see the Singer Gazelle. This is the new Singer Gazelle for 1967. And you can see it is the aero body. It's the same exact car as the Hillman Hunter, Minx, or Sunbeam Vogue. And then this is the Singer Vogue. These cars would all be on the market until, well, three years from now, I think. And that would be the end of Singer. A special sports car, the Valkyrie 500, being advertised by a girl in a bikini. And then Volkswagen, finally. Volkswagen is now in many different countries, but in 1967, almost all of their cars were still based on the four-cylinder air-cooled boxer motor. That for the 1300 and 1500, which is its official name of the Beetle, the 1200 is the version that lasted the longest. This would still be produced in Mexico into the early part of this century. There's the 1600, 1600L, indicating engine size. These are called, this, the variant in Germany, is, they are called Squareback in the U.S. market. That's kind of another nickname. Almost all of these Volkswagen cars took on nicknames. But you can see, this is the, the range of cars that they had at the time. Ending with the 1600 Carmen Ghia special body, which is really beautiful. Oh, here's the Zeta. Uh, we saw the Zeta in my Encyclopedia of the Automobile video. And the, the Zeta is built by Lightburn and Company Limited in Australia. So an Australian car with a two-cylinder, two-stroke, 324cc engine. I love that. How fast does it go? 90k, so that's going to be maybe like 50, 50 miles per hour. The Zill and Zaz, one of these in the movie Goldeneye. <laughs> There's a microcar section that I like to take a look at, and it includes the Attica, a Greek mini car. This is really a Greek licensed version of the Faldemobile from Germany that will still be built there until the, at least 10 years from now, I think. So the Attica, there's Bond, Bond 875. Here is Bond's car, the, the Bond three-wheeler, the Reliant Regal. And then there is a, a supplement, uh, supplement portion, auto cars, an Israeli car. So Israel's car is marketed here as the auto cars. I've also seen these marketed as the Sabra, auto car Sabra Sport right here from Israel. And that is the end of the catalog, apart from a bunch more advertisements and some numeric tables of all car production for the past year. But we don't know yet how many cars will be produced in total for 1967. <laughs> the Citron advertisements. Well, that's all very interesting. Thank you for joining me on this little trip into the past. I hope you enjoyed it and that it was interesting. Will this year be any better than last year? God only knows. But if you could help my channel get some visibility, consider liking the video and maybe subscribing. And uh, I hope to see you again soon.
in 2021. Take care.